Through the first two weeks of the college football campaign, the underdogs hold a slight edge against the odds makers, going 45-41 against the spread, and 19 of those puppies have won outright. And double-digit favorites, who historically are money in the bank in the season's opening weeks, are a pedestrian 28-25 and 25 against the spread, eight of them losing outright, including Michigan State, Oklahoma State, Tennessee, and UAB last Saturday. Now that's shocking news considering last year in the season's first two weeks, those double-digit chalks combined to go 31-13 and 13 versus the odds makers. Hi guys, Al DeMarco here, general manager and lead handicapper for the world's largest online sports handicapping community, picknation.com. Every weekend this fall, I'll be right here giving you free college and pro football winners. I've got free picks coming up on Northwestern and Syracuse, West Virginia and Auburn, and Southern Miss Virginia. But first, I wanted to talk a little gambling strategy with you. You know, two of the most important angles to always consider when it comes to handicapping college football, the look ahead, and the letdown factors. Let's take a look at some of today's examples. First of all, the look ahead. Purdue hosting Northern Illinois. Now the Boilermakers are back home after a 38-36 loss on the West Coast at Oregon, but they definitely have their eyes cast forward to next weekend's game with Notre Dame. Keep in mind, they've also only covered three of their last eight versus the Mid-American Conference. Meanwhile, MAC teams, 13 and five, against the spread versus the Big Ten past couple of seasons, so bad news perhaps for the Boilermakers. Also, very tough spot for South Carolina. You know, the Gamecocks are returning home after that 41-37 loss at Georgia last Saturday. They should rebound very easily, though, against the Florida Atlantic team. That's 1-11 and against the spread in their last 12 non-conference road games. But keep in mind, South Carolina, very, very big Thursday night game against Old Miss on the docket. The only good news for Steve Spurrier's squad, they're on 7-3 ATS runs, both as a home favorite and as a double-digit home chalk. Here's one you probably never thought about. Arizona State hosting UL Monroe. Definitely not a national TV game, I can tell you that much. This is another cupcake for the Sun Devils, who opened with a 50-3 route of Idaho State. But don't be surprised if Arizona State doesn't get caught looking ahead to next week's big game at Georgia. That's going to be their first real test of the season. Finally, Penn State hosts Temple. No big deal for the Lions, who have won the last three meetings by a combined 123-3 score. But Penn State, a monster, monster revenge game against Iowa next week in Happy Valley. Now, the good news for the Lions, they're on a 19-8 ATS run as a double-digit favorite. The bad news for the Lions, they're 0-2 ATS as a double-digit favorite already this year. Now, let's take a look at a couple of teams in a classic letdown situation. How does Michigan, coming off that huge last-minute win against Notre Dame, how do the Wolverines possibly cover this big number against Eastern Michigan? True, they've covered the last four games after playing the Irish, but remember, two years ago when these two met, Michigan only prevailed by 11, laying 29. Southern Cal and Ohio State, thrilling finish last week, but both teams in tough spots today. Trojans, 1-6 ATS in their last seven Pac-10 road openers as they head to Washington. Meanwhile, Buckeyes battle Toledo and Cleveland. They're 2-9 ATS in their last 11 games versus Ohio-based Mid-American Conference teams. And Toledo coming off that big, big win against Colorado at home last Friday. Finally, Iowa pummeled rival Iowa State last week, but today battles Arizona at home. Visit the Penn State on tap next weekend for their Big Ten opener. Keep in mind, Wildcats are on a 14-8 ATS run as an underdog. Now let's get to today's first free pick, Northwestern at Syracuse. Wildcats struggled to get to 2-0, especially last week. A 27-24 home win against Eastern Michigan. That's an Eastern Michigan team that lost the previous week at home to Army. But that final score is somewhat deceiving. You know, Northwestern jumped out to a 21-0 lead in that game. Then they relaxed, then they needed a field goal with six seconds left in order to win it. But because of the way that game played out, you were getting tremendous value in this line if you backed Northwestern. Keep in mind, last year, 
30 to 10. They won, snapping a four game series skid. Syracuse, 28 7 loss as a 29 and a half point road underdog to Penn State last week. They lost that one, followed uh, overtime loss in their home opener to Minnesota. I say in this one, you back Northwestern. If this price goes to three and a half, you buy a little insurance, buy down to three by buying the half point at your book. Next up, Auburn at home against West Virginia. Revenge situation for the host Tigers. You recall last year, they were up 10-0 before you could blink. Then they ended up losing that game 31-17. Now Auburn's off to a very quick start this season. 37-13, they beat LA Tech. 49-24, they beat Mississippi State. Both home games, no look ahead here for Auburn. They only have Ball State next, so they win this game. They're off to a 4-0 start. They've already accumulated 1,045 total yards in their first two games. Two excellent running backs, Ben Tate and Ontario McCaleb. Uh, they combined for 271 yards against Mississippi State. They rushed for 265 yards in the opener against Louisiana Tech. West Virginia, okay, they beat Liberty. You and I could beat Liberty with nine other guys. They beat East Carolina last week, but they struggled against the Pirates. 35-20, the final score, 11 penalties for West Virginia, four turnovers. That, I think, definitely puts them in a difficult situation here today in their road opener, especially with a quarterback making his first road start. Now, again, if you have seven and a half, you buy down the half point, for that extra insurance. The last game, Virginia at Southern Mississippi. Well, what can you say about Virginia? They opened up the season losing to William & Mary 26-14 in that game. They had seven turnovers. They played three quarterbacks. They only had 268 total yards. Then last week, they take, took on TCU. They lost that one 30-14. They only had seven first downs in that game versus 23 for the Horned Frogs and 177 total yards in offense. Their quarterback, the guy that's played mainly so far for them this season, Sewell, well, he has four interceptions and he's been sacked nine times. Meanwhile, Southern Miss, 26-19 win against Central Florida last week at home. This is another one of those games I often tell you that you have to dig deeper and look into the box score to truly see how the game played out. Well, the final score showed Southern Miss only won 26-19, but in reality, they dominated this game between the 20s. Total yards, Southern Miss 409, Central Florida 194. Here's an interesting trend for you. Southern Miss is 14-1 against the spread in the season's third game the past 15 years. 14 of the last 15 years they've covered the season's third game. Great running back, Damian Fletcher, already uh, leading this rushing attack for the Golden Eagles. It's averaging 265 yards in the first two games. Very underrated quarterback in Austin Davis. He's guided an offense that's averaged 39 points and 507 yards in total offense. You know, if he continues his pace, he'll throw for 2,400 yards this year. Meanwhile, Al Groh, with the Cavaliers, 16 and 27 ATS on the road, two and six in his last eight eight uh, road openers. I say lay the big number and go with Southern Mississippi. As I always tell you, though, just keep in mind, these free picks are good selections. They're not my strongest selection of the day, however. They're quality picks, but they're just a little flawed. However, I found the one game on today's card that stands out head and shoulders above all others, the one game that's worth playing, and it's the one game where I believe the odds makers have seriously, seriously undervalued the favorite in this matchup. In fact, I believe the line in this game was off by at least six points. Last year was my seventh straight winning NFL and college football campaign, a season in which I went 3-0 and with my highest rated releases and capped the year by, of course, hitting the BCS title game for the 10th time in 11 years, backing the Florida Gators. So don't miss my college mismatch game of the year. It's going to be my first 10-dime college release of this campaign. I only had three 10-dime plays the entire baseball season this summer, won them all as well. And that play is available right now at picknation.com. If you're playing just one game today, guys, I'm telling you, this is the game you've got to play. Good luck today, and I'll catch you again right here tomorrow with all of my NFL free picks.